From the floor of the CME Group, this is Danny Riley with today's Cash Close. And the name of today's video is Traders, S&P 500 Futures, and Mutual Fund Monday. <laughs> you don't hear much about that happening very lately. Now listen, I want to remind everybody that these are not our father's boards, our charts, and everything that we used to think that we would use to make money in the market doesn't work anymore. And the things that do, do work, they don't last very long. The high of the day in the S&P came at 21.82.5 mid-afternoon. The low came at 21.69 quarter on the open. I should know that. I bought them on the open. And last were 21.78.5 were up 10 handles on the day. Total volume, they had 2.5 million minis trade on Friday, and we just went over 1.1 million minis. And I want to remind you what that means, traders. That's what we call thin to win. The MIM started out showing 800 million to sell. It, it trickled a little higher. The actual MOC came out sell 570 million. The S&P sold off a little bit. And as we're talking, it's going back up a little bit. Now, this week we've got a busy week. we got the Fed Symposium and Jackson Hole. We have 24 economic releases. That's a high level of economic releases. We have seven T-bill or T-bond auctions announcements. We have five Federal Reserve Bank presidents speaking. And we have the Friday jobs report. Now, Janet Yellen seems on track. She wants to raise interest rates. The Fed's behind her. They want to do it. I know they do. You know they do, too. But that said, we've had these really, really good jobs numbers over the last couple months. And how can they keep that running? And I think Friday's number is going to be instrumental with how they see forward with what they're thinking. And again, I think uh, the... There's a 35% chance, the Fed funds on the Board of Trade are showing a 35% chance of a rate hike in September and a 60% chance in December. And even then in December, I'm kind of weary about that because you've got the election and you don't know what the economic environment's going to be. It's a couple months, three months out, and it's just un a little bit unpredictable. Now, look, I want to talk about something real quick. I know the S&P got a little weak last week. Sell signals came off. Indicators starting to sell. People start to get short. The Fed comes in. Janet Yellen comes in on Friday. Gets this dip right after she talked. A big rip up to 2186. And then you break down all the way under 2158 late, late in the day. All good for the Bears, right? Not really. Not really. Because late in the day is when the guys with the better seats move in. And they started buying the S&P up late in the day. In Globex, the S&P goes down a little bit. Comes in unchanged to higher on the open, the 830 open. And then what happens? Boom, buy program. And what is that about? You know, look at I, I didn't hear anybody on CNB talk, CNBC talk about this. Why did the S&P go up? Was it because of good economic reports? Was it because of what was it because of Europe? Was it was it Asia? Could have been Asia. It wasn't that much going on. The DAX was weak today. But then you know what? It's all money flows. Remember this, the first three days of the month and the, the, the last, last three days of the month and the first three days of the new month, the mutual funds buy and sell stock. They bought stocks today. Tomorrow, the stats, the day before the final trading day of August, has the S&P up 15 of the last 19 occasions. So it's a pretty, no, has it down 15 of the last 19 occasions, excuse me. So uh, there could be this kind of two-way flow going into month end. I think you got to be careful, but net net, I think the S and P is going higher. Then you go into and then you go into September, and you've got to. I my my gut tells me that, and I think you got to use your gut, use your indicators, but get a feel for the markets. You know, what? global quantitative easing is like a stopgap. It just they they just they go down and then boom, done, finicio, boom, right back up, squeeze out. And, and that trade is, I'm just not part of that. I'm not looking to sell. I'm looking to buy weakness long term. Even after the market sells off hard, I'm still going to be looking to buy. And again, I think that that could come at any time, but I just don't think it's now. What I do think is we go into the end of September and October, that's when things will get spooky. So we're going to leave it like that, traders. Oh, yeah, one last thing. I got to, got to say something. Very, very basic. Very, very, just, you don't have to have an M MBA, you know, to know, you don't have to have a PhD, a Papa has dough, but 
there's one rule I want you to remember. Rule number one, the trend is your friend. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. I'm going to leave it like that, and I'll see you on the closing print later this week. <clears throat>